Hi, good afternoon and good morning. So today, as a part of Global Reasonative Medicine Expert, which is a uh, YouTube channel dedicated for regeneration and uh, rejuvenation. So we are starting a series on nutrition and uh, we are lucky and fortunate to have uh, Dr. Gabrieli Azini. He's an international renowned uh, nutrition expert and well-respected orthopedic surgeon. He frequently gives international talk. And uh, today we are starting our first series, the first session with him only. And uh, the topic today for is, because now whenever uh, people have, a lot of people, they have joint pain. And we know one of the most common cause of uh, joint pain is osteoarthritis of the knee and different joints. About 60 year old is usually around 18% uh, of female and 9.3% of the male. They are having osteoarthritis if they are above the age of 60 year. Usually we come across about what actually is the role of diet and nutrition uh, in progression of osteoarthritis or any arthritis or any joint pain and what we can do uh, for that. So Dr. Azini is here. So Dr. Azini, in your opinion, like you, you are treating a lot of patients, not just this theoretical knowledge, practically you treat a lot of patients of arthritis and also you have a vast knowledge and experience. So let's start with the role of nutrition. So in your opinion, uh, what are the different factors which contribute to joint pain and what are the diet things in the diet we can you know change to prevent and uh, progression of the disease hi dr kumar it's a pleasure to be here participating in, in this series of interviews talking about regenerative meds you have a, a really interesting youtube a channel and you do a lot of interviews and videos about this topic and it's a pleasure to be here with you. And I think the, the biggest problem is that usually people uh, hear for, from their doctors that there is uh, nothing to do and they can eat wh whatever they want. It, it will not make any difference. But we know that because of the, we can read some new uh, research uh, articles, studies that shows that what you eat really uh, can change your body environment and can decrease inflammation inflammation or increase inflammation and it's really really important that you can choose the right food right meal and uh, using this kind of uh, approach you can decrease inflammation of course the your meal intake is the most most important thing and after we can add some supplements because we have some deficiencies that we can treat with this kind of substance. Okay, so if we talk about like diet, usually oh, we come across that there are certain diet like fish oils we have, vitamins we have, we have certain uh, uh, other materials like supplement, nutrient or bone broth. So let's start with the diet. So fish oil, uh, we, we are reading, you know, for a long time and there are some literature also, but it's still there is confusion like uh, what actually is the role of fish oil and is there any evidence for this and how much we should take and how it works? Yeah, the fish oil is uh, a really important uh, nutrient because we need the... the the not uh, animal kind uh, of uh, omega-3, like the DHA and the EPA, that, uh, that are the types of omega-3 that are, were found on fish oil. So we need this kind of uh, substance to produce our cells, our um, neurons, all kind of substance. And they, they really have uh, anti-inflammatory properties in our body. So we need this animal omega-3 from fish oil or it can be from krill oil, but we need this. And it is very important because research shows that some uh, uh, populations like the Eskimos from uh, Greenland, they have a, a 
a relationship, a relation, uh, a ratio between omega-3 and omega-6, like one-to-one. -one. And in our society, we have a relationship like uh, a ratio of one omega-3 to 20 omega-6. And we know that omega-6 has uh, some inflammatory properties. So we want to, uh, to reach a balance, like one to five, one omega-3 to five omega-6, it will be perfect. And the problem is that, especially here in Brazil or Europe, we eat a, a lot of uh, salmon, but they are created in uh, fish farms, not uh, collected from the ocean. So they, this kind of fish, they don't have the uh, animal forms of omega-3, like the APA and uh, DHA. So we are thinking that we are eating health foods, but they are not health because we are, it's not the wild fish with the real a good amount of omega-3. So it's very important to use this kind of substance to uh, try to fix the ratio between omega-3 and omega-6, which is the, the, the most important ratio for, for our uh, uh, anti-inflammatory properties. So if you start uh, taking some supplement with omega-3, you have to look at the content of the supplement because sometimes you, you have uh, a 1,000 milligrams a capsule, but in, inside this capsule, you have just 200 milligrams of omega-3. So you, you can take a fish oil, but without omega-3. And the, the quantity that we need to decrease inflammation is usually uh, higher than 1.5 milligrams uh, 1.5 uh, grams of omega-3. So if you take like a, a one, one gram capsule, but with just 200 milligrams of omega-3, you need more than uh, 15 capsules. So we need to find a, a good form of omega-3 supplement with high quantities of EPA and DHA. Right, right, right. Yeah, you're rightly said, and it's not only for the joints. They are antioxidant, and they help in different other uh, restoring and helping in the well-being. So let's talk about the vitamins. Now, we know that certain vitamins, particularly vitamin A, D, A, K, they have antioxidant properties, and they're also helpful in preventing the joint pain. So uh, what are the common vitamins one normally the people like a general person or a, from the general public, they should include in the diet and uh, what is their role actually, how they can help in relieving or elevating their symptoms? Yeah, th there are a lot of uh, very important vitamins that they should include in their diet and also not just in their diet, like the vitamin D. We have to be exposed to the sun to start the production of vitamin D in our skin. And this is one of the most important vitamins in the world, especially this time with this uh, pandemic situation, uh, infection. So we need vitamin D not just to protect our joints, but also to increase immunity, to protect from uh, viral infections and so on. But uh, talking about uh, joints, uh, there are many studies that show that vitamin D is very important, not just to decrease pain, but also to uh, uh, break the, the, the degeneration of our joint because it starts start to decrease the, the quantity of uh, uh, metalloproteinase that break collagen in our joints. So it's important to use vitamin D to protect, protect our collagen type 2 in the cartilage and also it causes a change in the environment if you we have the deficiency in vitamin d we have a more inflammatory environment and when we start to use these nutrients like vitamin uh, d or vitamin c which is another uh, great uh, anti-inflammatory antioxidant compound we can start decrease the inflammation, especially inside the joint. Because if the whole body is inflamed, 
it's impossible to have a, a health joint. So we have to decrease the inflammation, the whole body to decrease the inflammation in the joints, like the knee, hips, and so on. Right. So what would be the usual requirement for a vitamin D for a healthy adult or the male and female? Yeah, there are some some questions that you should ask to, to your patients. Like we have to dose the, the amount of 25 hydrox vitamin D, which is a precursor of vitamin D in the blood. So uh, with, with this level, with, with this level, we can start to uh, find a better a dose for the patient. When I find like lower levels of 25 hydrox vitamin D, I start with uh, those injectable dose like uh, 600,000 units of uh, vitamin D in injections intramuscular. And if we found we find like 30 nanograms per deciliters of uh, 25 hydrox vitamin D, we can start to use oral supplements. But usually in Brazil, we have low dose supplements like 400 units uh, of vitamin D. So a uh, study shows that if you want to increase the content of vitamin D, we, we use, uh, you should use higher dose like 10,000 units a day and start following the patient with blood tests to see when you reach a, a, a good level of vitamin D. And actually, if you have a... a, a obese patient we know that vitamin d is a liposoluble vitamin so it starts to uh, uh, spread in the fat of the patient and it, it takes longer to increase the levels the blood levels of vitamin d so if you have a fat fat patient maybe you should start with a higher dose and if you are dealing with a patient like here in london where you don't have a lot of sun and so the production of vitamin D is really low. We have yeah. to start a, a higher dose of vitamin D. But you are, if you are in, in India, Dubai, Brazil, or other accounts like where we have a lot of sun, it's easy to be exposed to the sun and start the production of vitamin D. Yeah. And uh, actually, there is also one paradox, you know, particularly in the sunny area, the people, they don't go... They don't like to go in the sun. <laughs> yeah. They are inside and in AC, you know, air conditioned environment because there's a high prevalence of vitamin D in these areas, like in UAE and other country. Okay, so what is the role of the, what do you think the vitamin C, E, and K, uh, how they can help in uh, re reducing the joint pain? Yeah, vitamin C also is very important. It's, it's, uh, as you said before, it's an antioxidant, so it starts uh, uh, dealing with the free radicals and it will help protect our joints. But we have to remember that the pelagra, which is a chronic deficiency of vitamin C, is a problem in the production of the collagen. And so we need this vitamin C to produce the, the collagen in our body, especially the type 2 collagen in the cartilage. So we need, and I usually like to, when I use like the collagen type 2 to, to stimulate the production of our collagen, I usually mix it with some nutrients like vitamin C and other minerals like magnesium, calcium. So I think it's really important. And nowadays we are not using a lot of vitamin C if you go to a place and ask for a orange juice but they did the juice like one hour before uh, you really don't have any vitamin C active inside the juice so it's difficult to to reach a good amount of daily intake of vitamin C so the best thing to do is to use uh, natural fruits like lemon orange but fresh in your house, in your in your breakfast, to start absorbing this uh, good quality vitamin C. Well, usually, uh, particularly when we are kids and younger generation, and our parents, you know, they always uh, you know push us to eat more green leafy vegetables, dark green, some more proteins. So now I think uh, evidence is coming that. 
green leafy vegetables they also help in reducing the joint pain so what is your opinion about uh, these things yeah we have to remember that the 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 green in the vegetables is caused by the chlorophyll the chlorophyll molecule which is a, a, a like the hemoglobin in our body and the center of the hemoglobin that carries oxygen is the iron iron in the chlorophyll the center is the magnesium and so if you eat some green vegetables green leaf you have a lot of magnesium and magnesium is a mineral that uh, participates in more than 300 reactions in our body and many of these reactions are to produce energy hormones decrease inflammation so it's really important for your bone your joint i think magnesium is one of the most important minerals uh, to decrease joint pain and i think i i prescribe magnesium for every patient with joint pain, osteoarthritis, bursitis, tendonitis. And this is the, the, the mineral that you can find in uh, green leaf. Of course, we have other substances like polyphenols that are good anti-inflammatory substances, uh, other vitamins, other mi minerals. And it's very important to eat uh, uh, health food because especially when you look of the, the to the diet that they are they are having in the United States, a lot of fast food, uh, sandwich, uh, French fries. They don't uh, add some uh, natural food, the real food in the in the daily basis. So we need this natural food, uh, real food, uh, to protect our joints and our body for any kind of degenerative disease. So what are the newer, uh, uh, you know, the new trend or the supplement which are available for uh, joint pain? One of the, the, the newer supplements that I, I'm using now is the Fisetin. Fisetin, there was a study with more than 10 uh, senolytic compounds like quercetin and others, resveratrol, but Fisetin shows the 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 best senolytic capacity uh, senolytic is like when we kill the old cells in in our body like the senescent cells so when when you get older we start to accumulate some senescent cells and these cells are unusable and they start to produce a lot of inflammatory substances like cytokines interleukin one interleukin six and when you use these uh, senolytic compounds like the fisetin, which is found in strawberry and other fruits, we start to kill these cells. And a uh, study shows that we can uh, protect our body for, from the development of osteoarthritis and decrease inflammation. Uh, there is a big study uh, happening in Cleveland Stedman Clinic, United States. They are testing the the fisetin in patients with uh, knee osteoarthritis and that they will release the results in next year in 2022 but they are showing really good results with the use of fisetin in patients with osteoarthritis there are some uh, botanical extract you know which are being now used for for the last many years dry from avocado soya bean and uh, they have been shown that again they, they prevent inflammations so do you have any experience uh, with these uh, two products yeah yeah we use in brazil we have a a, a market product called uh, piascaridine that is a mix of these oils from avocado and soya bean and they really shows that decrease inflammation and <clears throat> decrease joint pain in patients so it's something that we use a lot in brazil uh, actually, uh, here in the UK, I didn't find this supplement, but I think it's uh, a good quality supplement to to deal with joint pain. And there are certain, uh, you know, the we can like dry fruits, the walnuts and the Brazil nuts, and they have also been shown that uh, they reduce basically cholesterol, and uh, like Brazil nut has selenium, which is there in the bone. So they also uh, uh, 
have been shown that they reduce, they help in relieving the joint pain. So uh, what about this uh, glucosamine and chondroitin? For many decades, you know, the people are using every day and uh, some of the insurance company, they say they're just a supplement. It doesn't, it's not a disease mode. It doesn't change structurally the arthritis. So what is your take on the uh, role of glucosamine and chondroitin and how much we should take, how long the effect lasts, or when, when does the patient actually start seeing any relief in the pain? Yeah. When you apply our knowledge in our patient, we have to keep studying, reading new articles, and we know that glucosamine and chondroitin are one of the most used supplements all over the world. But the new studies show that it really it, <clears throat> the effect in long, long term uh, uh, pro uh, in protection of the joint destruction is not uh, big. Like sometimes some studies show that it decreased pain and I still use this kind of supplement. But to protect the, 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 the joint, I think there are a better supplements, uh, some new nutrients that are showing uh, uh, more effect uh, in this purpose. And usually, I don't know uh, in other parts of the world, but in Brazil, they are really expensive. The glucosamine and chondroitin compound usually are used in a dose of 1.5 grams of uh, glucosamine and 1.2 grant of chondroitin and they are really expensive and there are other uh, nutrients like turmeric which has a curcumin which is an active compound for for from turmeric which it has a higher uh, anti-inflammatory effect than glucosamine and chondroitin and i think if you want to really uh, uh, relieve the pain of your patients. We should try these compounds. Some new studies from this year shows that uh, it's, it has like the same effect, decrease the, the pain, like one of the most, uh, the best sellers anti-inflammatories like ibuprofen and without the side effects of the inflammatory, anti-inflammatory substance. So I think it's a good uh, choice and I actually I'm stopping prescribing glucosamine and chondroitin, and I'm using more this kind of substance like the curcumin from turmeric and piperin, which is increase the absorption of the curcumin. Yeah, curcumin. Yeah, and <coughs> are there are certain easily available product at home like garlic <coughs> and the onion, and uh, now some studies are showing that like garlic has allicine which reduce the you know the symptom in uh, arthritis it also has like diallyl and sulfide they also reduce the joint pain and onion has quercetin and uh, for ages our uh, you know grandparents and parents they are using them as a part of their routine food and even some uh, old parents they just take only the garlic and some onion every day in the morning so yes Although there are a lot of commercial products are available which combine different kind of nutrient, but yes, I agree with you, they are expensive. And uh, they have other preservative also, and not everybody can afford. So I think the, the good idea would be to combine some uh, natural which are easily available, not so expensive, and to combine with other things like uh, uh, regular physical activity, diet, and other. So uh, for a, uh, what will be your advice, you know, in general, like how to keep your joints healthy uh, when you are young so that you can prevent the uh, progressive degeneration or development of arthritis and particularly the, this young population, you know, who are not or the young kid or adolescent who are not very keen to go outside and play. Most of the time, they are on gadgets. They like to play video game. They don't like to go outside. So what would be your advice to this young generation and the adult population, how to keep your joint healthy? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, a huge problem because they don't want to practice sports, to, to play uh, football, basketball. They want to play video game all day long, eating a lot of fast food <laughs> and snacks. And yeah. usually they are uh, fat than we were when we were young. Of course, and uh, this is a, a good, pro a big problem because they don't eat real food. They don't like to eat fruits and vegetables. Only uh, fast food, this kind of uh, trash food, and they don't do exercise. And we we know as an orthopedic surgeon that the the muscle are a very important to protect the joint. You could uh, be the, the healthier person in the world, but if you don't have muscle, you uh, increase the, the uh, overload your joint with pressure, and probably it it will be easier to get a, a, a meniscal tear or a, a cartilage lesion. And my uh, my advice is to eat real food. To avoid these uh, refined carbs that you find everywhere in bread, uh, 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 sweets, or sugars, and do uh, practice, uh, use your muscle. You know? Play football, play volleyball, basketball, sports, and start to, to uh, produce, uh, stimulate the production of more muscle to protect your joints. I think it's uh, the uh, biggest problem with these young uh, children. Yeah. The another big problem comes like now a lot of people are vegetarian or converting to vegan. <laughs> and uh, when they're looking for nutrient for the bone, particularly like <laughs> or vitamin D, so they don't like the animal source mm. uh, of these uh, vitamins or the calcium. So what is your take on those how they can you know they can also maximize the benefit of getting nutrient but not from animal but from vegetable source yeah i have a lot of patients uh, that don't want to to deal with animal uh, products because uh, of the environment or they really don't like and it's very important to to keep in mind that we need some type of vitamins that we you we only find in animal products like the the B12. We, you can't find B12 in vegetable source. Of course, we have low amount of B12 in chlorella, but you have to take like one kilo of chlorella every day to to reach the amount that you can find in one piece of uh, beef. So I think the biggest problem is this lack of vitamins, especially B complex. And also we know that uh, uh, animal products are a perfect source of protein. So if you rely just in you know, vegetables, uh, you can start uh, eating less protein that you need. And this is a big problem because you need the protein to produce your bone, your muscle, and every kind of food. So I think if you really uh, decided to not eat any kind of animal uh, uh, food, you should uh, really go to a doctor, do some blood tests, and use some supplement. You can find some uh, like omega-3 not for, from the fish oil, you can you can find this omega-3 from, from algae oil, which has the animal forms of omega-3, DHA and EPA. But you really need uh, 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 to follow and to, to do some blood tests to check if you need some kind of nutrients, some kind of vitamin, because it's really dangerous to follow some uh, trends without thinking about your the the result in your, in your body now there's also you know some uh, uh, push from the pharmaceutical company the young you know people who are doing uh, intense workout or gym activity or bodybuilding 
and uh, they are taking a lot of these collagen glucosamine and uh, and uh, like i also receive a lot of patients and they want this supplement so uh, they are not having any arthritic problem but they basically want like a, as a preventive uh, measure or they feel that they feel more strong when they take collagen glucosamine or high dose of vitamin d and they think it enhances their performance also so what is your own take on this yeah i, I believe that when you do a, a intense training uh, you we have to remember that the the, the exercise is, is uh, stimulates uh, inflammatory uh, cyto uh, release of cytokines in our uh, muscle cells and in, in our body. So if you do a lot of exercise like this, bodybuilders like train hours in the gym, or people that do uh, marathon, this kind of thing, they really need more. Uh, uh, nutrients and sometimes they can't find the, 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 the good amount of uh, nutrients in the food. So they, this is the kind of people that actually need uh, supplements. And to decrease this inflammation caused by the exercise, we usually use vitamin D, vitamin C, and if they want to increase weight or gain muscle, we usually can add some um, creatine, which is a, a source of energy, so it's very important to increase the, the power to, to do the exercise. And also studies show that creatine increases the, the muscle f fiber, so it's good for gain weight, protect the, or protect the old people from sarcopenia and dinapenia. So I think it's very good to add some supplement. I like to add some whey protein, which is a good source of uh, good quality protein. So I usually use whey protein, especially in old people that don't like to eat a lot of meat, a, a, lot, a lot of uh, beef and, and chicken. So I usually add some uh, dose of whey protein twice a day, depending on the necessity. But I think it's very important, especially if people uh, doing intense exercise to add some uh, nutrients like vitamin D, vitamin C, collagen, creatine, and so on. Uh, thank you, Dr. Gabriel. This was an excellent talk. Dr. Gabriel has its own uh, YouTube channel with uh, more than 1.5 million subscribers. And he has a lot of vi detailed videos covering all the different new trend and general well-being with millions and millions of you. So it was an honor uh, to be sharing uh, this talk with you, Dr. Ezedi. And uh, this was a general first session. Maybe in the subsequent series, we will go in on individual new trend in more detail. An idea is to give the evidence-based information. And uh, thank you, Dr. Gabriel. So, uh, uh, once again, I would like to thank our viewers. I hope uh, we try to cover the general uh, questions which are commonly asked about uh, how to reduce the joint pain, improve the well-being of the joint, prevent arthritis. And the key area, as Dr. Gabriel has clearly pointed out, that we need to have a balanced diet, maintain a good uh, healthy lifestyle, try to maintain an optimum uh, body weight. And uh, combination of natural and the supplement will definitely will relieve or elevate your symptoms and will reduce the inflammatory marker and will promote the healing. Thank you. Thanks once again, once again, Dr. Gabriel. Thank you. It was an honor for me to be with you here. I really admire your work and I expect that we can be in another uh, meeting like this soon. See you. Same. So if you like this, you can uh, uh, subscribe our channel and also Dr. Gabriel's channel. See you for the next session very soon. Thank you.